All right, welcome back everyone. Let's uh, give our vase a render now. So I'll show you how I render um, my thumbnails for my videos. It won't be an advanced rendering tutorial by any means, but it'll allow you to uh, render objects that you make. All right, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna select the object. I should have some UV history here from the last part. So I'm just gonna delete that. And now we will um, talk about this. So to render this, we're going to first create a composition, which means we'll need a camera. Uh, we could render using our perspective cam, but it's always good to make a separate camera just because you may want to uh, reorganize your scene and you'll lose that shot. Um, and then we'll, after we establish our um, composition, we'll throw in some lights and then we'll render. So let's create a camera first. So go to the Create tab. Down here you have cameras and we're going to create a regular camera. Let's open up our outliner and I'm just going to rename this camera. I always like to call it uh, something that allows me to understand what it is. So I'm gonna call it render cam. Uh, if you have multiple cameras, you might have render cam one, two, but I'm just going to use the one uh, render and camera. All right. And then uh, let's switch to our two panel view. So that's this one over here. And then in this panel over here, let's change it so that we see through the rendering camera. So go to panels, perspective, and choose render cam. All right, so um, right now the camera is uh, inside our vase. So go to your move tool and we'll pull this back and maybe lift it up a little bit. All right, and then um, if you were to um, render a more balanced shot, you may just wanna move some of these handles and maybe play with the angle a little bit. But if you're creating something more dynamic, you know, you might want to go in here and just move around this scene. Uh, it's easier to move around this object if we frame in on, on it first. So select it, press F, and now we can just um, move it around. All right, uh, the first thing you'll want to do is select your camera and open up the attribute editor. editor. You want to choose the focal length early because that really impacts what the camera sees. I'm gonna go with 35 millimeters. Um, that will give me sort of like a balanced view, so I'm gonna stick with that. Uh, the rest I'll leave alone for now. Just gonna close this up. And then um, over here, it's a little bit hard to see what the camera sees, so let's go to uh, some of the camera settings, right? We'll go to view, camera settings, um, I just realized that we could probably change it in there as well, but we I prefer to change it in here for some reason. So camera settings, and I'm going to turn on resolution gate. Now we can see um, the frame of the camera, and I want to give it a bit of overscan as well, so some buffer room. So we'll go to view, camera settings, and then overscan. There we go. Let's actually um, select our camera. We'll open up the attribute editor again, editor again. And then down here beside, um, sorry, the drop down for display options, I'm just gonna lower that gate mask color a little bit. Something like that works for me. All right, so now we have our um, two panels, right? And we can frame in on this and find a nice a composition for this vase. So I'm gonna go with maybe something like this. Um, Often it's, well, we don't have much in our scene, but um, if we want, we can maybe turn on use lights. Now you won't be able to see anything, but I find this is great for just getting a good composition sometimes. So something like this is fine. Yeah, so I think that'll be fine for now. Um, and you'll wanna work on, on getting as close as possible to the composition you want, just because um, once you add lights and you start rendering, it might uh, become a little bit slow if you're moving things around and it's rendering at the same time, but it, um, you can always change it later. So right now, we'll go with this. All right, so we have our object, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this camera for now so I don't accidentally move this scene. All right, let's go back to this one. And now um, in this scene, I want to create a backdrop. So some of you have asked, how I have that gradient background that I have in some of my thumbnails. So I'll show you how I create that. I'm going to click on the plane and then I'm going to scale this up. And for the plane, what I'm going to do is press T on the keyboard. Um, oops, press T on the keyboard, there we go. 
That'll bring up this window, and I'm going to drop the subdivisions down to one. And then um, what I'll do now is I want to scale it up a bit more. And I want to be able to go in to this view and not see the edge of this, right? So I'm just going to scale that up and maybe move it um, out this way a little bit. All right, that should be fine. And then this back edge here, I'm going to extrude that up. So go into your edge mode, select this edge, um, go into your move tool. I'm going to hold down shift on the keyboard and just extrude this up. And I want, to be, want it to be high enough so that I don't see over it as well. And that should be plenty. All right. And then I'm going to also take this edge here and I'm going to bevel it. So shift, right mouse button, bevel. And let's reduce that fraction to about right here. And then if I press three in the keyboard, you can see that it smooths out. However, it's um, curving all the way to this edge here. I don't want that. So I'm going to press one to go back. And what I want to do is add another edge loop right here. So let's grab our object again, grab our multi-cut tool, and I'm going to hold down control and add an edge loop right about here so that now when I press three in the keyboard, um, it stops curving to about this point. All right. Now we have this, um, we could smooth it for real if we want, or we could just uh, change it to a preview and render it that way, but I'm actually going to smooth it. So I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna hold down shift and the right mouse button and choose smooth. And I'm gonna make this maybe three subdivisions. That should be plenty. There we go. And now let's uh, scale this as well. So I'm gonna select this and make sure I scale it this way enough that um, I can't see through the sides. So right now it's fine, right? Um, it could probably probably be fine a little bit in like this as well, right? But what I wanna be able to do is if I go into here, change the angle, I don't see past that point, right? So I wanna make sure that this goes far enough. There you go. I'm probably not gonna go that extreme, so, but you never know. We can always change it later though. Um, let's bring it back to here and lock the camera again. All right, so now we have our two objects and we're going to render using the Arnold renderer, which we will find from, um, if I tap the spacebar, go into here, um, you have an Arnold shelf right here. So um, let's pin this renderer to the left here. But before we do that, let's give these two objects um, a material that works with the Arnold renderer. So the Arnold renderer will render um, other materials as well but it works really well with its own shader. So let's select the backdrop. I'm gonna hold down the right mouse button, choose assign new material. And what we are looking for is the Arnold uh, shaders, and we're gonna choose the AI standard surface. All right, let's select the backdrop. I'm just gonna delete that history. Um, that allows me to have not too many inputs here and I can just select the AI standard surface. I'm going to rename it. So I'm gonna call it AI underscore maybe backdrop and then for the color for this I'll keep it fairly neutral for the seam but I'm just gonna lower that value a little bit so there we go and then for the vase what I'm going to do is select this hold down the right mouse button choose assign new material and same thing I'm gonna choose Arnold and the AI standard surface and then over here I'm going to call this AI underscore vase. And for the color of this, um, I'll adjust it in a second. Um, let's um, add some lights to our scene. Also, let's set up our render view. So go back to your Arnold shelf. Here is the uh, render view. So click on this. And your render view is going to look a little bit like this. It'll open up in its own window. What I'm going to do is uh, pin it to the left here. If I pin it now where the outliner is, it's actually going to pin on the left of the outliner. So what I'm going to do is open the outliner and close it with this option so that it's no longer there. And then I'm going to pin it right about here. And now if I want, I could open the outliner and it'll be on the left side. Let's just minimize that. All right, so we have um, our render view on the left. We have our objects over here within the pers perspective panel. And then, um, we need some lights now. So, um, by the way, if you're uh, if you want to frame this um, view, just press F 
and they'll frame in on, on that. So um, there's your light options are up here. What we're going to add to start out is the sky dome light because I want to add an HDRI. So I'm going to click um, create sky dome light. It'll create a sky dome light with already um, an intensity of one. So if we want, we can click render. So this play button and it's going to render, except that it's rendering my perspective view. I don't want that. And also it's rendering using my CPU. I prefer to use my GPU to render. Um, so I'll show you how to switch that as well. But you can use your CPU if you want. I'm gonna click stop first. There we go. And then we could change um, this to the render cam shape. But what I usually do is I go into the settings and then down here, I'll change the renderable camera to my render cam. There you go. And then we'll still need to change it there, but it's changed into here. It's just a habit. And then for the system, I'm gonna change it from CPU to GPU. There you go. And that will make it um, render a bit faster once it fires up. All right, so I'm gonna close this up. Um, and then I'll change one more thing in a second, but I'll just show you. If I click render right now, which is this play button, it's going to render a lot faster. And also I wanna change this to my render cam now. So it's saying render cam shape still, but um, it should be the render cam. So you can see now it's rendered. Um, I have a lot of noise, right? So I'm gonna turn on my denoiser as well. I have an NVIDIA card, so I can add my um, optics denoiser right here. You can also use this one if you like, but I'm gonna click on this one and close this up and you can see a lot of that noise is gone. All right, so now I can go in here, select my vase and maybe play with the color a little bit. I'm going to try and match it to the reference that we originally used, which was just a dark color. So I'll just bring this down to about here and I'll play with the roughness, maybe bring it up to like a, maybe a 0 0.6 or 0 0.7, right? So something like that for now. Um, you can see though that um, it's kind of plain looking, right? The lights aren't really doing anything. So let's add an HDRI. So let me show you where I grabbed my HDRI first. So if you um, go to this website, it used to be called HDRI Haven. It's called Polyhaven now. And you go to assets and go to HDRIs. You can download an HDRI image. And the one I chose is this one here. Um, but really play around with it, see which one you like. I'm choosing Photo Studio Loft Hall, and I went over here and I just downloaded it. It's These are free. You can donate to this website if you like, and you can change the resolution that you want. I went with a 4K image, and I left it at EXR, which is a high dynamic range file. And then you just need to click download, and it'll save it. And then, um, now that we added our Sky Dome, Sky Dome Light, uh, right beside color, there's a checkerboard right here. If you click on that, you're going to have the option to create a node. So we're creating a render node and we're looking for the file node. So click on this. And then once you click on that, you'll have an option to choose what file you want to add. So choose this folder right here. And then it'll open up and you'll need to navigate to where you saved your image. And for me, it's the Photo Studio Loft Hall 4K EXR. Um, after you render it once, it'll create this other file, the TX file, but um, what you're looking for is this one. And then click open, and it'll use that for the background, right? So you can see now we're getting um, a lot more um, um, lighting information here, right? As well as a bit of color from this. Um, if I go into here, I can also select my Skydome light and I can rotate this a little bit as well, right? And maybe I wanna rotate it um, a little bit this way, right? I'm probably gonna rotate it so that, so this background, um, it has some bright spots, right? Which is interesting, but um, it could affect your scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna select my backdrop and I'm also going to increase that roughness a little bit. Something probably here, there you go. And already you can see it's starting to look a little bit interesting. Um, now I don't need this backdrop to be this bright. I'm probably going to lower it. So let's uh, select the sky dome light. I'm gonna lower this intensity to 
probably 0.2 or 0.1, right? So it's gonna be a lot darker. And then I'm gonna up the exposure a little bit. Now this, I don't want this to be my main light. So I'm gonna make the exposure probably 0.25 for now and take a look, maybe point, let's try 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Uh, 0 0.5 should be, uh, 0.4, let's try 0.5. Uh, yeah, that should be enough because we'll be adding more lights. So um, that's just to give me a little bit of fill light. Um, I'll probably be creating another fill light as well, but it um, you can see that I'm getting really nice lighting information in the background now. Right, so now we have that. Let's uh, add a uh, area light. So this that's this one right here. Click on this, and then um, our area light, make sure it's selected, it is, and I'm going to scale this up, and I want this to be my key light. So this will be my main light. So we're gonna go for roughly like a three-point lighting setup, but I'm, even if it wasn't a three-point lighting setup, I always call the main light the key light. There we go, and I'm gonna move this and put it roughly 45 degrees from this. And um, let me just rotate this a little bit, scale it up a little bit more. I want to make sure that I don't accidentally see the light, so I'm just going to move it back as well and then rotate it down ever so slightly. There you go. Now let's um, increase the exposure of this light. So over here, I'm going to increase the exposure to probably around like 10 to 12, but I'm going to start off at maybe um, 10 for now. Right, that looks pretty good. That's gonna need a little bit more, so let's try 11. Works as well. The backdrop might be a little bit light. Um, so right now, I'm probably happy with the backdrop, but I probably um, will increase the lighting. Let's try 11.5, and then I'll change the backdrop color. So looks pretty good. Um, Let's increase this backdrop color a little bit. So I'm gonna increase the value just a little because I want it to contrast this darker vase here. And in fact, I'll make my vase a little bit darker. Um, there we go. All right, now let's add our uh, second light. Third, if you include the uh, sky dome light. So I'm gonna add another area light. And this one I'm gonna to move to this side. Also scale it up. And this is going to be my fill light just to add some lighting on this side of the vase. Um, and what I'm going to do is um, increase this exposure maybe to probably eight. Eight's all right, I'll play at the slider now. I don't want too much lighting, it's just a little bit. So maybe like um, I'm going with around 8.6 for my scene. Your values will be um, different than mine because your vase might be a different size um, as well as your lights might be further or closer to your object. All right, so I have a light on this side. It's pretty good. I'm just going to move it over here a little bit and also rotate it a little bit. All right. And I'm not sure if it needs it yet, but I'm going to add a backlight for this as well. So let's add another area light. And again, we'll scale this up. I'm gonna move this behind the subject, which is my vase. Move it up a little bit. And I'm going to rotate it as well. So, um, oops, let's just do this. And I'm gonna hold down J just so that it snaps. There we go. We'll bring this down a little bit and maybe rotate it forward a little bit as well. All right, should be fine. Let's take a look. Um, so right now it's been updating, so I had that on. And that's why the GPU is nice to render with. It's pretty fast. Um, in this scene, we can also turn on use lights Right, so that's this one right here, just so we can see this scene a bit better. Um, it's up to you. Um, some, sometimes I just work without it, but you can see it better now. All right, so we have our lights working for us, and we have this. 
And what I'm going to do now is um, play with the exposure a little bit. So right now I'm getting a lot of light back there. I'm actually going to move my backdrop just back a little bit. I think that looks nice. And then I'm going to um, first increase the exposure of this because I don't think we have anything yet. Uh, maybe seven. Seven's not too bad, actually. So I'll go with seven for now, but I'm going to just play with the um, position of this because sometimes you can get, get um, nice highlights, um, interesting highlights, just by playing with this a little bit. All right, so I think that's pretty interesting. Maybe I'll scale it out as well. All right, and then um, this is a fairly neutral scene, but I'm going to give it a bit of color. So this main light is fine. I feel like overall, this scene is too bright. So I'm just gonna select my sky dome light and reduce the exposure now a little bit. So go down to probably 0.4. 0.4 should be all right. And then um, maybe even 0.35, let's try 0.35. And then over here, I want to maybe make this a warm color. So I'm going to contrast a little bit. So I've selected my key light and I'm going to give it a bit of temperature. So maybe something warm. Might be a little too warm. I'm going to increase that a little bit. And then my fill light over here, I might contrast this with maybe a cool tone. So. A little more interesting there we go and then finally the backlight i think the backlight is fine um yeah um i'm not really feeling this warm tone to tell you the truth so i'm gonna select it and i'm actually going to turn off use color temperature and i'm gonna go with maybe something just a little more yellow There you go. All right, so that's not too bad. Now we're rendering using this resolution, so let me just show you. I'm gonna open up the settings, and it's just 540 um, square, I believe. Common settings, uh, HD 540, yeah. Uh, so 540p. Um, I'm going to change it to 1080p in a second and to do another test render, but I just wanted to let you know what we're working with right now. So I'm just gonna close this up. So now that we have our lights and um, if we're happy with this composition, I'm gonna keep it really simple. I'll probably play around with this more maybe later um, to finalize, but for now let's do our, um, let's just say we're happy with this. So what we'll do is we'll do a um, increase some of the samples. Now this part here, I don't normally do much for my thumbnails. I'm usually happy with the low samples that it gives me. But if you want a nicer render, I'll just show you what you would do. So you would open up your attribute editor. And over here, you'd increase some of the samples, um, sorry, the samples of your lights as well as maybe your shadows. Um, just keep in mind, it's going to increase your render time by quite a bit, but we could increase these samples a little bit. Um, so maybe I'll increase this. Um, actually, there's no point in increasing the samples yet till we create a higher resolution, right? because we won't really see the, a big difference. So let's go to our settings, render settings, and down here, let's change this to 1080p. So I'm gonna open up this, and then down here we have a 1080p option. And you may need to reframe this possibly, so I'm gonna press F to frame in on it again. And you can see this, right? Now this scene is fairly plain, so it's really not worth it probably to increase those samples, but you may want to. So let me just show you again. So I'm gonna hit stop. So let's select the lights and let's increase some of these samples. So I'm gonna make this maybe four samples, the backlight four as well. And this light over here, um, four samples as well. Uh, the shadows I'll leave alone. I don't really need to, but you can increase your shadow samples. 
And then um, let's close this up. I'm going to leave the Sky Dome light alone. So I'm not going to increase those samples. You can if you want. Um, then I'm going to close this up and we'll click Render. There we go. And you can see now it's quite a big difference, right? And it's going to take um, a bit longer. And it's rendering. So. Okay, so um, because there's no major bright spots in my scene, um, I'm not dealing with any fireflies. Fireflies are these like kind of like distorted little things that um, shadowy, wispy areas that you might find um, and they blotch up your scene. It's hard to describe, um, but if you run into that issue, I'll just show you how you can fix that as well. So you would go into your settings and actually you'll get a nice render this better render this way as well. You'd go into your Arnold renderer and you would upload that camera AA samples, right? Anti-aliasing, maybe up to four, and it will increase your render time. Um, and down here, um, another thing you can do to improve your renders is you can increase some of these samples. But keep in mind, um, it's going to add a lot of time to your renders. And for me, when I render, I try and keep the time you know, not not too long, right? Um, so I usually don't play with these, but sometimes I will, and I'll increase maybe the diffuse up by like one value, right? And the specular. Just gonna close this up. Yeah, so I think that's it. Let's take a look at this now. Um, I'm going to maybe peel this off so we can have a better look at this. And we'll frame in on it, and this is what we have. So, um, and what I usually do is actually I'll probably play with the lighting a little bit more. And what I usually do is I do a 4K render. So, but um, it probably won't be much different than this. I could try it, see what you guys think. Um, let's minimize this again. And what I'm gonna do is stop this. I'm gonna run a 4K render and then I will fast forward it and we'll see if there's any difference, if you find a difference. Oh, actually, let me show you. So if you wanna save this image, we can go down here and this is going to save a snapshot, right? So it's saved a snapshot for us and then we'll be able to see and compare after. So let's change the settings now. And for my 4K render, I'm gonna go with 3840 by 2160. And I'm gonna click play, and that's gonna create another render. All right, so the render finished, and as I thought, there's not much difference between the 4K and the 1080p image for this scene. So this is the 4K image, this is the 1080p. So 1080p and 4K. And then when you're done, you'll probably want to save this image. So go to your file tab, go save image, and you can save it where you like. I'm just gonna put it on my desktop and I'll call this uh, Vase uh, version one. And click save. And that's all there is to it. And it'll save your image um, in multiple fo file formats and you can open it up and make edits to it in Photoshop or whatever, or you can just um, upload it somewhere. So yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, today's tutorial. Uh, that should be it for this one. So we will see you in the next. This has been Digital Dreambox, your destination for game art.